This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole. I'm introducing Rabbit Hole and their one-of-a-kind bourbon and rye whiskeys. I've talked about this jazz so much on this show because I'm a big fan and they're a big fan. And together, we make a gold, baby. Uh, Kaveh Zamanian, Rabbit Hole's founder and whiskey maker, gave up a 25-plus year career as a clinical psychologist to pursue his lifelong passion to craft the world's finest spirits, and that he did. Instead of buying aged whiskey, he went all in, learning from the best to develop his own recipes in an iconic bourbon distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. No shortcuts, no compromise. Last year, he was inducted into the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame's 20th anniversary class. What you got to say about that, baby? That's pretty legendary. Rabbit Hole's mission is to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. And their whiskey's proven original mash bill recipe, signature malted grains, aged in hand-selected charred and toasted barrels. They got both. Just award-winning small batch whiskey made with passion and love. You're looking for a whiskey with a new perspective? Skip the ordinary. Sip the extraordinary. Wow, I love that, huh? I feel like I should be wearing a suit, James Bond style. I do love this stuff. I've been drinking it. Um, it is very, very delicious. Uh, there are four whiskey expressions. They got Cave Hill. I think we sipped uh, this and some of the high gold, actually, uh, me and Bill. Um, this is their award-winning four-grain triple malt bur bourbon. They got the high gold as well. This high gold, this is great jazz, uh, high rye double malt bourbon. Then they got that boxer grail award-winning sour mash rye. Mm -mm -mm, delicious. If you're a rye gay or a rye gal, you're going to like it. And then Derringer. This stuff is uh, finished in uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry cask. Delicious, 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 delicious. I can't say enough good stuff about Rabbit Hole. Go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly. Use the promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. That's rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly. Promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Or go to rabbitholedistillery.com. See where it's sold in your area because it'll be sold everywhere, my friends. Jump down the rabbit hole with me. Drink responsibly. What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today, like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Bill Bellamy. Man, the OG booty call king. It's Bill Bellamy. Love this dude. Got to shoot a pilot with him. Uh, we chatted it up, had a little souse, and had a wonderful time. Check out his podcast, available everywhere that you get podcasts. It's called Top Billin. Check it out. Also, hey, tonight, Cleveland, Ohio, right? I'm here, baby. Let's go. Me and Bob, me and Robert E. Lee, a direct descendant, are doing the Bad Friends Live. We're doing stand-up. We're doing stuff from the show. So much fun. Cleveland, tonight, get your tickets. And tomorrow, we have two shows in Pittsburgh. First one sold out. Second one, come on down. Go to badfriendspod.com for the tickets. Badfriendspod.com to see us live. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It is Bill <laughs> Bellamy's in the house. Andrew, Cheers. Come on, man. Cheers, Thank my you. man. I've Cheers. been waiting Good to come on you. with you, man. I know. It's been a minute. I'm glad you came. Mm. Oh, man. People don't know. No, they don't. Oh, that's good. Ah, that's really we shot good. a pilot together. We shot a little something, something together. Yes. Tell the people, man. So first and foremost, I had a pilot um, for ABC. Yeah, it was ABC. And... Um, it was initially it was called Winning Ugly. Winning Ugly. That's, that right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. That was, right. The, yeah. that was the first, you know, sort of like it was with um, uh, Malcolm uh, D. Lee. He was the director, um, of course, and I played this, you know, um, this dad, you know, who basically black guy, ex athlete, who you know marries this white girl who has these two sons, and I'm mm -hmm. sort of like their new stepdad, yeah. you know. And the original premise was called Black Dad. Yeah. You know, black, black dad. dad, really on the nose, on right that. on the nose. Like we don't want to get confused. And so black really, dad. really quickly, my buddies, I had my bo boys that I played cards with. Right. And I wish to God we would Becky, Becky Newton played my Becky, mm -hmm. Becky, shout out to Becky. She's cutie. Very, very petite. Very, very nice. So tiny, tiny girl, tiny humans, cute as hell. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we had a scene when we were in the card room. It's like with a boys room. You, when I say everything that came out of your mouth was bananas, bro. Mm, like, like you, I was. Man. That's when I first met you. I didn't know how funny you were, bro. You was your ad libs <laughs> were crazy, <laughs> and they 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 used them. They yeah. used them. They used them in the um 
in the pilot. So for people who are watching and listening, you know, a pilot is basically a representation of what we want the show to be. Yes. And you get a chance to see all the characters. You see me, you see my kids, and you see my buddies. And we had um, Slink Johnson yeah, in there, Slink, too. Yeah, Slink, man. Crazy ass Slink. Black Jesus, Black if you Jesus, will. Black Jesus, that if know. you will. So we bonded since then, so yeah, Santino's, man. you my dude. I'm so happy that you're here. And also, when I did that, I was, I was excited because I thought, man, it was so funny. What I saw, what we did was so good. Right. And like everything else in the business, you're like... Is it going to go? Who knows? Yeah. And, and you never know with any of that stuff. You and never the do. show they picked over us yeah. didn't do shit. Of course not. Of course! <laughs> you could have picked us. We've been on TV for seven years. What are you doing, Bob what Iger? What are you doing over there? That's Bob why we're striking Bobby! right now. Because you didn't pick up should've his show. Up. You should have done they it. Picked up the, they picked up the show uh, where the girl was the softball player or some stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Two episodes uh, done. What was the name of that? It was, she was uh, a pitcher or something. She uh, was a pitcher. God, what is it? What was that Cute called? Cute girl that was a pitcher. She was, it was ABC show. It was like... Um, yeah, it was like... Not she, softball, baseball. She played professional she baseball. She played baseball. But anyway, I have so much to talk to you about, honestly, because yes. on that day, we were working and laughing, but I wanted to get to know you mm. more as a human today because I've, okay. I've seen you... I mean, for a, a large oh, the pitch. That's what it was called. The yeah, pitch. It was called yeah, the, the pitch. pitch. Yeah. I've sorry, guys. Yeah, no, sorry, the pitch. <laughs> sorry, the pitch. Sorry, it didn't work. My bad. But but <laughs> I've seen you for a large majority no of my young life mm -hmm. on television. You've been in my world, and then also as someone who I became a stand-up when I was you know twenty-one years old, mm -hmm. and you had already lived in and out of so many different worlds. It's impressive to me to think like you grew up in the guts of hip hop in the East Coast. Correct. Which I have such a such a absurd affinity for mm -hmm. McCone and I were talking bring it up we were joking around about how many people are influential that were in the movie who's the man and then the, everybody the was list in that is movie. like it, it, it was almost like absurd a, a Super Bowl well, comedy expand over. expand okay so look at this look at some of these names we were going over before well in the in one the, movie yeah one movie the cameos alone were like be real Ashanti <laughs> yeah Bushwick Bill Busta Bull legged Lou I mean CL Smooth Busta D Nice DJ right. Lethal it was just Eric, Eric B Eric, Eric B you know what it was a hip hop album on film it really was yeah that's what it was but it was yeah. it, because as someone who you know I, I'm an '80s baby and mm -hmm. I grew up like admiring and falling in love with hip hop in, in my you, were, you came up at the right time that was like a, it was it was when everything was, was blowing moving. up yes it was like in the '90s so you're probably 12. You're probably 12, 13, 14, whatever. Yeah. And you're like absorbing this big ass wave of pop culture. Yeah. Did yeah. was there was there was there, you know, cats that you knew that were that ended up blowing up that you didn't think were gonna blow up, or vice versa? Like, was there someone that when you were when you were in in the thick of this that you were like, this dude is gonna make this dude's oh, gonna be wow. the biggest? Like, um, I'll give you an example of somebody I knew was gonna blow up with Snoop. Yeah, it was because, so obvious. Because Snoop was just different, his tone, his voice, and then Dr. Dre had put his foot in that album. Yeah. And I remember the first time I heard it, I was at um, Aftermath, you know, up with Jimmy Iovine. You were at the record company. I was at the record yeah. company. This is back in the day when they were like, this this is our best shit ever. <laughs> and, you know, Jimmy's like, have a seat. He's got the fly $42,000, like, sound system in the yeah, office. Yeah. So do you feel Dre's music? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I was sitting there, like, you know, as if I am MTV. And they gave me, you know, sort of like the sneak peek of listening to every track, the ones they thought they were going to lead off with. And I heard his sound, and I was like, yeah, Snoop is out here. I didn't know Snoop would become, like, what he is 30 years later, but I knew he was going to blow up. That well, first he became album, an icon now. He became, his first album was Doggy Style, right? Well, and for people that don't know, you you were, you are and and an icon and we're a representation of MTV and, mm -hmm. and when the world that I grew up with of Yo! MTV raps and what became something so, such a fixture, you know, we were watching music videos before you came. He's a young, young lad, but he loves hip hop. Yeah. And we were talking about old tribe videos and like how Ugh, experimental they were. Classic. And, but, and what was, what was amazing was you kind of, you were at this cultural forefront of when videos dictated culture, right? Like yeah. everyone's talked about you and booty call and, and, that's, you know, and the phrasing of that becoming popular. But the truth also was everything that was going on culturally was made through MTV in those music videos. That's how it got yeah, push, push, that push. Was sort of that was sort of the um, MTV to me was sort of like the uh, the factory for hip hop. It a, was. You know what I mean? Where where the videos influenced the culture, what we were wearing. Yeah. You know, the colors, the dances. Mm -hmm. um, 
Um, what I love most, and I talked about this um, on one of my other interviews, is that what I love what MTV did at the time was bring hip hop to kids like you. Yeah. Kids that didn't necessarily grow up in New York City, kids that were curious about music and they got to find an artist that they like, like, oh my God, I love Nas. Oh, I love Tribe. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, uh, there were so many new, I love Method Man, you know, like all these new look sort of, they were like characters, you know, that came out of hip hop that became. It was super, it was huge. superheroes to us. They were superheroes, right. like your kids, and you're like, yo, that's cool. Like Naughty by Nature came out of nowhere and blew a hip hop parade. Mm. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, like, put them up. Like, this right here was so 90s. Put them up, put them up, put them up. up. Right? Like, you just had to do them. <laughs> and no one knew what Tretch was saying. Yeah, no. But it was cool. <laughs> we didn't know what the f he was saying, didn't but it didn't matter. The beat was right. The energy was cool. Um, and a lot of times it was kids first introduction to hip hop period uh, for sure yeah and it, because pre internet you know the only way to find out about stuff truly was to me music videos yeah. were the way i started to learn and then through them i would learn i'd go see a show and i'd see who opened for them and then it, it, whoever was like you know, a new young MC, they'd put them on the show, and then you'd be like, "Yo, who is that guy?" Yeah. And then a year later, he'd come to your, you know, to your come city to and your play town, smaller and You ones. have to go. Yeah. Well, like, dude, what the about, amount of money I spent when on those. Clan came out? My God. 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 The Killer Bees, <laughs> bro. I swear to God, I get goosebumps when I think about that video. When they were the bees, the killer bees was flying Swarmed down Broadway, yeah. like in New York. Oh my God, what? It was just the vibe and the beat of that. Yeah. Like, woo, I remember, I was in Denver, Colorado. And the girl who I was doing comedy works at the time, I'm sure you've been there before. Oh, yeah, I love that club. And uh, the girl, I can't think of her name right now. I want to say Rebecca, but I might know, I might be wrong. She was the whitest girl ever, like <laughs> suburban, blonde hair. She was like the PR person for the club. And she's the one that comes and takes you to TV, right? Mm -hmm. She said, Mr. Bellamy, my first concert ever. You're not going to believe. You're not going to believe. And I said, you are the whitest girl I've ever seen in my life. What was the first concert? She said, Wu-Tang Clan. No. And she started going, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. She didn't even look like yeah. she wouldn't even know. But she was like, Bill, I was a kid. I was probably 13. And they came to Denver. And that was my first concert ever. And it was so epic to me. Yeah. I would never forget it. And I was like, that's what hip hop was. Yeah, like, it was. You know. And I hope that, you know, even though this year is 50 years of hip hop, I hope that, you know, we keep evolving and keep, you know, getting more fans and more people to love the culture of music and, you know, this fashion and and all, and just the energy of it is different. You yeah, know what I mean? no, it's new. I mean, I don't think it's ever going to die. Right. I think it's going to keep taking shape. You taking know? shape, yeah. It just changes as we go, right? Like, I, as I've gotten older, <clears throat> the further apart I think I'm in touch with, some of the newer stuff, but I do think I still Classic. appreciate it. You know, like I still yeah. like it a lot. Mm. It's just, it's not the first thing I jump to. Right. But that was the same thing for my generation with my dad and music they loved. And it was like, yeah, I like it, but I like this shit more. And they I, were like, I, oh. I like, I find that, I find that now that, you know, 30 years into the game, when I go back and actually listen to Groove Theory, the Groove Theory Tribe mm -hmm. album, I'm appreciating it in a different way. Like I go back uh, recently and I was just listening to The Chronic, just listening to each track and just going, damn. Like I felt like I lived through that. Like go back to go back to one of your favorite albums when you were a kid and listen to it now. You will remember certain things like, yo, that's when I got my new sneakers. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, me and my boy got in a fight. Oh, we played football at the park and I, because I believe music are like snapshots in your life. Oh, yeah. You it's know better, what I mean? They're better than photos. Yeah, they're better because you I will remember, remember everything, like the concert you went to, the girl you liked, yeah. da 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 you like, know what I mean? I said that to him. I literally said Elevators was was on in the background oh, of, uh, oh. of at a party. I was under this kid, Charlie. Shout out Charlie Macko. I, I don't know if we should say his full name. No, but I was at Charlie Macko's house in his basement, and I hooked up with the chick, and I – and. Uh, that it was like it resonated with me for the rest of my life that that was playing on in the background and the you, lights were You low will never forget that, bro. <laughs> no, bro. Because you're like nervous. You, meet, <laughs> you like this girl. Y'all having a little fun. Yeah. And that beat was the soundtrack to your mood. Oh, it was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> I love it. That's where I got my rhythm from. That's, that's where, where I got, you got the, that's that where I got the stroke from. Come on, it got I that got the stroke, stroke from it. <laughs>
She'll never forget it. No, no, she has she, no idea. She's she thinking never, about she it never right remembered now. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's married with seven kids. So she lives in the country now. Yeah. No, so you're a Jersey guy, right? Mm -hmm. You're a Jersey kid. Mm -hmm. But you did you grow did you grow up in the city? Did you live in New York? No, no, I point? grew up in Jersey. Okay. Now, um, you know, um, the interesting thing about living in Newark and growing up in Newark, you can like you on certain days you could just see New York. You see the city, yeah. And uh I always, you know, wondered what it would like to be over there. I have family, like I would go to New York all the time. Like I have family in the Bronx, I got family in New Rochelle, New York, I have Queens and, you know, Brooklyn. So I would go to New York to visit family, like on the weekends and stuff and cousins and stuff like that. But I never like lived there. And I always admired New York City. And yeah. it always seemed so big to me. And I remember saying to myself, like 13 years old, I jumped on a train my parents never know to this day that I did this. I caught the bus because I said, I'm going to go to New York City. I got on the path, and and I, I rode the train in New York and came up out of at a Penn Station. Mm. And I got there, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, the buildings looked like they went for miles. Like, I don't know what made me do this, but I said, one day, I'm going to make it here. Like, I remember saying, like, one day I'm going to be a star in the city, and then I got back home, and then I got back on the train and caught, caught the bus home. But it was that impression as a child that this was the city where the real people make it. Like, if you're going to be real, you got to be known in New York. Mm -hmm. you got to blow up in New York. So the whole time I was in Jersey, I was just shooting the look or get across the water, you How know what I mean? There? Yeah. You know? What was the path then to, what was like the first path to you? What, what was the impetus for you going, I have to, I want to make it in this business? Mm -hmm. And what was like the click that did it? What was the thing well, that did it? Well, I, I, I would like to say it was Eddie Murphy. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Eddie Murphy had came to my school in college. He was on the... Um, Where'd you go to school? Delirious. I went to Rutgers. Yeah. And so he did, he did a stop. I guess it was, maybe it was Delirious, I guess. I don't know. But he was going through, this was like 88 maybe 87, something like that. He did a performance at Rutgers, and I just was in awe of how funny he was. And I said, man, that is crazy. He talked for a whole hour, and everything he said was bananas, mm -hmm. right? So I was like, man. And he from, he from, he's from New York. He's right across the bridge. He making it. Right. <laughs> he's he's he, he's making it. I was, I was like, I want to do that. Like, I remember saying, I want to do that. I want to be able to tell funny stories forever, like where I could tell funny stories and like be hilarious and do voices and, and talk about my life. And I just was, he left an impression on me. So then I started doing like little, little stuff at school, you know, hosting coffee houses. I was, you know, if they needed a comic to do anything, I did it at school. Um, at Rutgers. At Rutgers. And it was like, no, it wasn't no, no real gig or anything, but I was getting practice. Yeah. And that was the bug, like, when I saw somebody that looked like me doing it. Because to me, Eddie Murphy made comedy cool. Oh, well, he did. I mean, yeah. before that, it was very... Uh... Yeah, it was like, you told somebody before Eddie Murphy, I want to be a comedian, you goofy motherfucker. Like, people thought you was like a goofball <laughs> for life. They didn't realize, like, yo, I'm actually humorous. Like, I got... You yeah, know. I got something different. Now you see it... It, that stigma is is gone. Like now, you know, when you're a comedian, people go, oh my God, my cousin wants to be a comedian or oh my God, that's cool. My favorite comedian is blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, when I was coming up, it was like, oh my God, you don't want to get a job. Yeah. You, yeah, you're, you, you almost like a clown. Yeah. You like, be oh, you want to work at the circus. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're doing. You won't be a circus, you won't be a circus clown. So what, so with with the world that you've lived in for so long as far as like you've touched so many bases right mm -hmm. you've acted and you you've, you've hosted and you stand up and like which is the one you think you want is are there are there ones that you think you're slowly going away from and focusing on more now or are you still like all of it the same um okay the newest the newest thing for me that I never did before was write a book, right? So yeah. um, writing top billing stories of laughter, life lessons, and triumph, that was like, yo, like. It's your first book. First book, yeah. Didn't know I could do it. Didn't know I could, you know, had a, you know, a story that people would read. And so that was like the newest thing in my life that I was like, damn, man, I'm capable of that. That's like pretty cool. Because I always thought like authors were like in a another world of smart and, you know, these intellectuals that can go and grab the words out of the atmosphere, <laughs> you know. So I always, always had reverence for that. But... Um, that is sort of new in my life, and um, will this be a continuation? You think you're I don't know. Keep, you I, keep I, writing I, your I stories? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think if I were to do another book, 
I would want to talk about fatherhood because it's just how it changed my life and what I what I learned being a dad on the job. I thought that might be kind of interesting. But um, my podcast is kind of like a new thing I never thought I would do or, you know, make time to do um, top billing. That is something that I think is new. It's a new audience. It's fun. It's like people get a chance to listen to you when they want. They, yeah. get, they get it a la carte. It's like a new vibe. Yeah. You know, it's like young. You know, yeah. I feel like I'm going to grab other people that may not know my whole 25 year career. Or maybe now I'm getting the podcast crew, people that yeah. just dig podcasts, right, you know, right. and like, yo, Bill's funny as fuck. And then they learn me backwards the other way. But I want to continue to do movies. Um, I, I, I step definitely want to, you know, stay um, in the TV world. I just feel like I got so many, so many more stories to tell. And I feel like I still, you know, need to hit that other gear like I, i've been gearing it you know but i think i got another good gear <laughs> down ship and <laughs> up ah! get the wheels up in the air yeah so then uh, that's it's interesting you say that too because i'm curious to know look I, I don't have don't have any kids and in the business the balance of what you're talking about if you were going to write that in the next book of being a father mm -hmm. and doing this dance you know is incredibly difficult i'm not i'm not trying to say at home there's people with very hard jobs that have long days and they have families to take yeah. care of but i guess the difference for us is i have a lot of friends that do it mm -hmm. that have a, you know a lot of kids and they're working like we're working and it, they find it so hard that sometimes you blink and you feel like you've missed chunks of time because oh, work man. consumes us <sighs> in a way where you've got to like almost leave home a little bit Yo, even man, when you're there it's it's you know it's a very difficult balance. Like for me, I, and I talk about this in my book, like sometimes you just got to take an L for the win. Yeah. You know, and by that I mean sometimes you got to slow down to get to get the better of what your family means to you because time does not stop. Mm -mm. And um, so when there was that lull in my career where Katz was like, yo, what happened to Bill Bellamy? Like, oh my God, like, I mean, did he fall off? I don't, I haven't seen him. I was trying to be a dad. Like, I was just like, yo, man, this means a lot to me. These are my kids. I'm never going to get this time back. So I just started doing less and then being around more. You know what I'm saying? So that was, but that was, now looking back, that was the best choice because now my my son is, my baby is 17. My daughter's 20. Like, they, 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 they're big now, man. Yeah, they're so gone. now I'm sitting here crying because I, I don't have no memories. I didn't do shit. Like, that would be a, that would be painful. So... You know, for me, any parent that's out there, you know, that, you know, struggle with that or an, or an artist, you know, this just because we're married to this game. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Yeah, you can't get a divorce from this. This your baby. Yeah, this you know is what it. I mean? But then when you add some pieces to that motherfucker, like, you know, <laughs> shit get real. You're like, OK, well, you know, your wife wants time. She wants you to do things. We want family vacations. You got to go to, you know, it's daddy day at school. Mm -hmm. I got to make pancakes and shit. And <laughs> I be doing some. I remember like doing some of the most like low key, like ridiculous shit. And I'm like, I'm a star, bro. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm Bill Bellamy and I'm, you know, I'm making banana yeah. pancakes. Like I'm not making puppy chow for like, your whole like, school. Like, 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 like I'm doing like. I be on shit. TV. Come on, baby. <laughs> I got a hit series and I'm in carpool. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. But it was also wonderful too at the same time. Now they're both gone though, huh? They're out of the house. Or the 17 year old uh, my still son, with you? My son is going into his senior year. So um That's... 20 he's class of 2024. So we're gonna be empty nesters and going 24, 25. Now are you gonna stay where you are? You think you guys think you're gonna move somewhere? Really? I think we're gonna move around. I mean, I think I, I just wanna um I think I'm gonna always keep something here in Cali, but I just wanna I want to have, you know, another experience, you know, that would be fun, that's different from Hollywood, you know? Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? Trust me, I know. I, 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 I'm really looking at lake houses right now. I always so, wanted, um, so am I. Bro. I swear to God, bro, so am I. I love lake house. I've Get, always me wanted on a, a lake, lake house. I just want to have a lake out back, the little boat thing. The kids yeah, could man. come. Jet my skis. boys, if I'm not there, my boys could come to the crib and they could just hang out and be like, Drew, you in town. Yo, just go to the lake house. The key is behind the two rocks. Go get it. <laughs> just leave, leave, leave. Put the beer back when you finish. Yeah, that's Yo, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put the whiskey back, 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 back. The key is always behind a rock. It's somewhere. always behind a Hint rock. Hint to anybody somewhere. trying to rob a lake house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look under the rock. rock. <laughs> Look under the rock. <laughs> no, yeah, the lake house thing is a good escape. Yeah. Like that's so to me. What about stand up to you though? Does that is that still oh, have any resonance? Is forever, forever, forever. I can't. You'll never stop. Come on, man. Yeah. As long as I got my memory. And I'm silly. 
I think of funny shit all the time. Like I'm driving around with put notes in my in my phone. Okay, blah 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 blah. blah. Okay, blah 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 blah. Like, cause sometimes the best time I come up with creative ideas is through conversation, mm -hmm. like having fun with what yeah, my with boys friends, from yeah. coll uh, college or something, or I'll just be in the car with no music on, and it'll just open up my third eye or whatever, and I'll just be like, oh, it'll be like a little vortex of great ideas that just pop in and shit. I'll be like, yo, I could put that on stage. That's great. Do you talk to yourself when you're in the car alone without mm, music? Yeah. See, I do too. Yeah, I talk it out, you know, and I'm like, okay, boom, 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 boom. I try to find the beats. It doesn't have to be already all the way finished or anything, just so I have the premise. Because before, I used to be like, I'll remember, you won't. I always keep a pad by my bed because a lot of times ideas come like when you're in that little weird, mm -hmm. cool spot and I'll just write the ideas down before I go back to sleep. Um, and um, and then I used to ride my motorcycle a lot. And, you know, when I had kids, I slowed up on that. I was like, I don't want You still got a bike or no? Yeah, I do. But I don't ride it. <laughs> Your wife is my like... My wife mm -hmm. always wants me to get, get rid get of it. Get rid of it, yeah. But I think I look at it and I feel like that's a part of my youth. When I was a man. When I was a young Maybe man. Maybe when I was a stud. No, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be the daddy with the limp. No. It's something. Why is one of his legs longer like, than the other one? Why does Bill walk like that? <laughs> no, I don't want to be that guy. So I don't ride it. But creatively, I would get him on my motorcycle right after, like, you know, let's say 730 when the traffic dies down. And I would just ride maybe all the way to Santa Barbara sometime and oh, just really? be like, and just vibe out, man, because it's so quiet. You're not on your phone or anything. Right. And you'd be so surprised when it's quiet like that. You just hear the sound of your motorcycle. You just, your mind just, it, it's almost like you're in a trance, not a trance, but you're kind of in a meditation. Mm -hmm. I used to come up with great ideas like that too. On your bike, when you'd, when you'd ride out somewhere, mm -hmm. like you go to Santa Barbara by yourself, would you go and spend the night somewhere and just to like no, get I'll away, just, you'd come I'll, right back? I'll just go up for the ride because the highways, fortunately for us in California, our highways are pretty smooth oh, yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And some of the, um, the further you get away from L.A., you get those windy turns mm -hmm. and you can lean into your turns and stuff. And I used to practice that. And then sometimes I'd just go up... Um, uh, towards the uh, mountains, so I'll just go up. Uh, like Ojai and stuff like Ojai. that? Ojai, yeah, yeah. I get on that, whatever that highway is, and go up there, and it's so pretty, like sweeping turns. Just You can lean for about a minute just going this way and then come back, yeah. and I go up there maybe 15 miles and come back. I never really wanted to be out that far when it's dark because now your, your vision is compromised. So it's like Highway 33. Highway 33, Yeah, it's beautiful. Right. It's like even in, if you got a drop top, or if you just got a really car, good car that you can that handles well, like that's a good highway for you. Mm -hmm. If you want to see what it does, because it's not like dangerous where it's like sharp turns, but they're like sweeping. Like if you got a car that can get it, <laughs> whoa, you know what I mean? That's a good. Do you one. got cars that can get it? Do yeah, you like? Yeah, I, you I do. Like, I like cars. You so do I. Yeah, I, I love little toys. What's your? Do you, you can you tell me which one you have that you you like the most that can get it? Uh, well, my my favorite is the AMG. Mercedes and and the thing about it is even though it's kind of luxury sport yeah it's got balls yeah it's got big balls so it's big, got big balls. beautiful balls big beautiful balls so like you can kind of drive it conservatively you know you're like okay cool I the daily nice car. car yeah you know I got this little mm, then you get on the highway <laughs> and hit that bra shit going bro <laughs> Like I, I took my car. Let me tell you one time. This is when I was like, let me see what these Germans talking about. <laughs> see if it's real. Oh, it's very real. Yeah. I would. I drove to Vegas, right? And Russell Peters got a story like this because Russell has this dope ass R8, and the Audi R8 is basically a Lambo truck. Yeah. With an Audi body. Yeah. It's yeah. just the same shit. He, 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 he puts a little smoke on it, but. Russell said he got there in like two hours and 48 minutes. You know what I'm saying? He said From he was, here to Vegas. To Vegas. He was cooking. Yeah. So I drove my car to uh, Vegas. And when you go into Vegas from L.A., and if you go at night, it's real smooth. Like if you're going right at dusk, usually not too much traffic. And then when you hit that 15, that 15 is nasty. Yeah, nasty. You can open it up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's not a lot of cops out there. You know what I mean? And now that we got ways, ways be like, slow down. They right over the... <laughs> yo, yo, my man is right on the right hand side in two miles. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, it yeah. lets you know. It lets I love you know. Waze for that. Waze is great. It should be called Snitch because they tell you they're snitching. 
Oh, my man in the bushes on the left. Yeah, <laughs> they're stitching. Yeah. No, yeah, the, it's fun to put up, bring out a couple of toys and yeah. and go. Ha- I like. I love. That's like the one thing I've always been obsessed with. When I was a kid, we never had like, you know, fancy cars or anything. Both of my parents worked, and mm. you know, they, like they always had cars. But yeah. it, it was. It but it was wasn't practical. like high end car. No, no, practical it was very cars. practical. It was very how did they get Midwest. To work? Yeah, very Chevrolet. Right. Like, 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 like Cutlass Supreme. Cutlass Supreme. A like, Buick. We like had a Buick. Buick, you know, Oldsmobile. Like, when you mm-hmm. go Midwest, like, you just see, like, tradition, like, Chevrolet. Yeah. You know, Ford. Got to get your Ford. And then, you know, a Ferrari for a Midwest white guy is a Mustang. I remember seeing my first Ferrari when I was downtown Chicago as a kid, and I, I thought, that must be the owner of the Bulls. And, I like, I yeah. had no idea people could have that kind of money. I was like... In my mind, Ferraris, you know, there were seven of them on earth when I was a young kid. I yeah. thought, no one could get, so who the fuck could that be? You know, I'm sure, and it was just some finance guy down at the Merc, you know, the Merc. So it was like, that's when I started to fall in love with the look of cars. The first, first time I saw a red Ferrari, I was like, First time I saw a red Ferrari, ironically, was in Chicago. Oh, really? And we saw the Michael, same cat? It was, it was Michael Jordan. Oh, it was Jordan's car. I said, oh my God. So... <laughs> This is when Michael Jordan is playing and he is walking baby Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm at the, I'm at the, um, is it United Center where you guys play, right? Bulls, yeah, used Bulls to be play. called the, yeah, used to be and called Chicago I'm, I'm Stadium. I'm in the tunnel. Mm-hmm. I'm in the tunnel, so I'm standing there. I'm getting my tickets in the tunnel where the players come in. And, and, and it echoes a little bit, you know, because it's, yeah. it's like, it's underground. Right. And I'm standing there talking to somebody and all you hear is, Ooh, <laughs> You know what a Ferrari sounds yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, it's so distinct. You know what I mean? And I said, oh, shit, who's that? Who's that? And I saw Air One. Yeah, Air One. Air One. I said, oh, Because <laughs> I never knew you could, like, personalize plates like that. Yeah, yeah. I was right. like, that is yeah. some baller. <laughs> yeah! I was like, and Mike got out. And, you know, Mike is 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. I'm like, how the fuck Mike fit in there? Mike came out that mug in pieces. Uh, <laughs> I had said, to disconnect his yeah, arm and shit. Uh, uh, snap back into place. He came out like, <laughs> like Terminator. Yeah. Uh, uh. And I said, oh shit, man. I said, man, that's flops. Like, yo, he just inspired me because it just had, it was red, it was typical. Yo, you got that's it. it. Yeah, 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 that was the car. That's the first, first person I seen drive that car, you know, and I was like, yo, that's Miami Vice. It was so beautiful. It was man. beautiful, yeah. man. Thank you for that, Mike. See? He had Mike had the, the old school Corvette too, and now what's what the fun, the best part about Michael Jordan that's mm-hmm. in the recent years mm-hmm. is the way the way like you know look here's a guy who really captivated fashion right and mm-hmm. like designed you know arguably if not the best shoe definitely ever. the best shoe that ever, ever, ever has lived. ever been made never right? gonna beat no but then you now you look at <laughs> the old running joke is like Jordan's fashion fashion. He's always swimming in his shit. Like he loves oversized Yo, everything. He got, uh, and he's such a skinny dude. Bro, the dude, Michael Jordan, got more money than everybody, and he still dressed like it's the eighties. <laughs> like Mike still got four <laughs> buttons. Mike got his high. He got high the high waist, jeans. High waist, high waist jeans. <laughs> Belt is over his navel. Mm-hmm. Mike locked in and tight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it, man. I don't know why he loves it so much, but I still see him. You still see pictures of him, like, on the golf course. Yeah. And that's his shit. Yeah. He loves Mike, wearing- Mike, Mike loves that golf. That thing, I think that gave him his new, his new, like, sort of basketball because even when he was playing, he was doing it then. But, like, now when you can play and he's playing on the best of the best of the best, he's got the best friends and he can get out there and learn. And he's super competitive. He owns his own course now. Hey, he has his on, own course. Now. Yeah. Come on, baby. You know, I'm winning on this one. Yeah. yeah I didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah, win yeah, on yeah. Tiger shit, but I'm winning on mine. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the bug bit him. What's, yeah. your, what's the bug that bit you later in life that you never did when you were young? Do you have something that you do now that you didn't do when um, you were young? a young man? Mm, well, one of the things that bit me is I'm um, I'm definitely video game since. Oh, you're a video like, game yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a gamer. So like I've I've been I've I've had every PlayStation from the I mean, god dang, I basically got a museum of PlayStations. I've never really jumped to Xbox. I got it, but I don't play it. You do the PS5? Yeah, I'm, I, I started with PlayStation One, two, three, four, five. I'm five. When they get to nine, I'm gonna have nine. <laughs> um, I got all the games still. I got every I, like I can go back. We can go old school. I got Sega Genesis. Damn. Like I've been gaming since the '90s. I had the first NBA Live game. 
What do you play now the most? The one that I play when I just want to kill motherfuckers and just blow some <laughs> steam off. Call of Duty is my shit. That's your shit. Call of Duty is just gangster. Like, you can go in there. And there's another game that I love to play that's good, too. It's called Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter. So Siphon, Siphon Filter, Filter is a uh, a Clancy game. Tom, Tom Clancy. Clancy. And, um, and it's a one-person play. But what's so dope about it you have to you it makes you be creative on surviving yeah. like um you know you could you turn it up you mm -hmm. put it on you put it on um professional mm -hmm. <laughs> bro they sending 40 50 motherfuckers at you bro like you 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 make one mistake like you got to be quiet it's all stealth so like if you use a grenade they send in the, they send in dogs they send in sentinels they send in all kinds of people at you so now you if you run out of ammo you you done mm. so what i like about the game even though it's an older play it makes you really think about how you move it. like you were looking at the video on youtube that's yeah. one of the first versions the one that i have is like super cool like you go in these buildings you go to different cities you can go to chicago and you can uh you know where the mercantile yeah, yeah all that Merc, is yeah. you you you're going through that you on the top of buildings now do you play gta too or you want to you know, grand theft auto no, guy my no. son my son rocks that gta pretty heavy people love that game but i i don't know if i like it as much you know what's wild about that game like now people you can you can be other kinds of occupations within it like i've seen videos online like guys will just be cops and pull people over in the game they'll just be a cop right. so you could just be a cop instead of the main character is like you, you know like the storyline has changed over the years i haven't seen it in a long time but i remember it was like you had missions to go on yeah now i'll see videos just dudes that are just cops like snitches pulling people over and shit <laughs> it's the it's the most bullshit i mean they'll I just remember, pull like, people over prostitutes in it and, right 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 and like i don't know uh, if you could be a prostitute in it, but you should be able no, to they, i see a lot of women and they be like i'm gonna be a hoe so <laughs> no but um <laughs> i just like to do what i do get paid on get gta get paid on gta get my weight up um but i i one night it was so funny i thought somebody was in my son's room and he was just like no nah, man don't go in there man i'm all right i'm all right hey, you go in there if you want to and it was him and like five of his friends they were playing gta mm. and uh you know they got the headphones he got the chair and the microphone and they like one guy has the big sniper rifle i was like oh man they was getting it i was like that's dope like where you can go and play with your friends and you know and y'all just say oh we going online at 10. yeah yeah I we'll see like, there. like that's super dope like, i know because for us you had to cool. come to the same house yeah though. we had to be in the same house if you weren't in the same room it was like yeah. I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. I'll tell you what I did. Yeah. Right, yeah, but yeah. that's I, I used to remember. Uh, we loved. Uh, what was your game? N sixty four double oh seven. We play. Double oh seven. Golden was hard. We play. Golden eye was hard. It was so much fun. Uh -huh. It was so much fun because we'd all get together. <laughs> it was my favorite man, and everyone would want to be odd job because he's a little tiny one close to the ground. Mm. Odd job is. Uh, Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee is odd job in in the oh, real world. Man, I love right, Bobby I remember this Lee. game so vividly, man. It was just so. F I'd play that. You for just hours had to. You had to, you had to just hours. make sure you get your. You can't panic. Yeah, you can't. Like, panic. like, like, and you got to know how to cycle through your weapons because that helps you. Because, because when you get nervous and they start coming, you swipe. You know, you swipe up to the ceiling. You do yeah. all this goofy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you start pointing. Uh, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the guns, you're like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, get the other top. You got to back up, back up, back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I love about that game. <laughs> So so now that when your kids when your kids do go mm -hmm. when your kids are are out and gone do you think you're going to start doing something else career wise or do you think you think that's going to speed you up or slow you down cuz like I have friends you know like a good buddy of mine Greg his his kid now is off to college mm -hmm. and I and he feels like now he kind of wants to shift up and like really start to get even more embedded in the business. And some people want to go the other way. No, nah, I want to turn up. You, you think know? so, yeah. I think I, because now I have more time. More freedom. But, then, but I also want to travel more too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the wife? Uh, yeah, me and wifey could just do some of those trips that, you know, that we wanted to do for ourselves. You know, we took our kids everywhere. We did all these great family trips and stuff. I think that would be kind of cool. We want to yeah. go to Africa. I want to go to Egypt. Have you been um, to Africa before? No. Never. No, no, no. I've been to Nigeria. My bad. I went to Nigeria, and that was super cool. I went to Lagos, and I want to do the Ivory Coast. I want to go to Ghana. Um, I want to do um, 
Johannesburg. Yeah, South Africa. Um, I think I want to just kind of like maybe make my way around. And then I want to go to Egypt. I want to go to Dubai. I've never been to Dubai Yeah, yet. Dubai would be fun. Yeah. I want to kick it with a prince. Yeah, I just want to hang out with that money money. I feel you like know, if you're cool enough, they might let you have a They might let you have a couple million. Say, yeah. Hey, man, you guys just have a little money. Yeah, yeah, just to get a, take a million to just go. Just go cut out some money you want and take with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If the buildings are made of money. Where's the Where's the greatest place that you went uh, for work instead of vacation? Like, what's what's the Where have you worked that you were like got to travel there and was unbelievable? Oh, Did you ever wow. do a gig somewhere that you had that you got to go shoot somewhere else or um, perform somewhere? Well, there's two places that I think was really interesting. Going to Germany, and I did this like um, I did this like uh, thing for the military, which was really really like cool. a USO thing or no? Yeah. yeah. And so it was really cool. So you go, you go to all their bases. You're right. So I went to Frankfurt. 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 Yeah. I went to Stuttgart. Stuttgart. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> is good, yeah. And I went yeah? to uh, Kaiserslautern. Yeah, Kaiserslautern. <laughs> right? That's what I say, right? Kaiserslautern. And, um, yeah, we like Will Bellamy. He's yeah, a funny guy. Yeah, Come so back it, here and make it, us it, laugh, it, Mr. Bellamy. Please. So we, uh, we had a good time. And then we end up getting on this, that fast-ass train from Kaiserslautern to Frankfurt. Mm-hmm. And we partied in Frankfurt, which is like the Manhattan of Germany. Right, yeah, yeah. Went out and met people from all over the world. The craziest thing that I learned from that that experience was that we need to be multi faceted with our language. Like we only like most in America, people lazy, they got English and Spanish. Right. But when you're abroad and you're somewhere in Germany, people speak French. They speak um, uh, obviously English. They speak Spanish. They speak German. They speak Dutch, and they go back and forth. You're like hearing, like you hearing every language. You're like, yo, I'm at the UN, but I'm in a club. <laughs> yeah, but imagine for them how close proximity they are. That would be yeah, like every three states that you that you moved to had a totally different language. Yeah. Like if we went to Arizona and they spoke something else, we'd start to get used to it more. We're just spoiled. We don't got to worry about it. We're spoiled in America. Like when I was in Germany, and even even when I went to uh, to to Paris, you know. Um, obviously people speak French, but they speak so many different languages because it's so easy to travel. Like you said, you jump on a train, you, in two hours you're over here, and, and an hour here. It's like, oh, my God. I was like, man. So I've been trying to learn uh, more and more French. I want to learn. Oh, you want so to learn So I'm French? working on Spanish and more French. Yeah, yeah because I just want to learn. I like, I like, man, I'm, I can learn some new stuff. I don't have to just settle with being, you know, simple. So I force myself to speak the language wherever I go. You're trying, huh? Yeah, so I get my Google Translate, and I just, like, make sure. Mademoiselle, uh, lady, she don't see people play. You know? Like, like I'm just... like <laughs> so just selling it, right? Yeah, like, like, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, bonjour. Yes. Do they like it, though? Bye. They like it, though. They yeah! Go, oh, they're oh, like, wait, yeah. wait, 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 yes. Yeah, they see you trying. This and then, then they, they pause, and they go, yes, yes. What do you want to eat? Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, even yeah. here, when I speak Spanish to Spanish people, they always go, what do you want? Yeah, what do you like, want, Like, they, they yeah. act like they don't <laughs> want me to speak Spanish. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm trying to get it. They're like, uh, thank it's just, you. It's just they can tell... When it's really it, authentic, like if you grew up with it and you're so yeah, they, you're they so can tell. Fluid, I'm, 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 they can tell. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, re- I'm reaching. Yeah, like my son right is through. really really good with his Spanish. My daughter's really good with her French. Like they, you know, they pick the language. And, but he won't do it. But I've seen him. You know, I'm like, dang, you could really speak Spanish. He was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, they, he doesn't give. A yeah, shit. he's just lazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, we when I was a kid, it was like you took a language class, mm-hmm. but no one was expected to retain any of it. Right, there right. Was no, nobody gave a shit. Yeah. It was like, yeah, take yeah. it. Then I, I'm just trying up. to get an A. Right, right, right. I, just, please, I ain't using this shit. Please, my ass. My life. I was right, trying right, to get right, a right, C. Right, right. I was trying to see my way through that shit. I was like, <laughs> can I get in and get out? Get out of here, clean baby. Like, were you good at school? Were you good in high school? And like, did you? You were good. Huh? I was solid. You were a smart cat. I was. Um, I was a B student. I was no A student. I wasn't trying that hard. I mean, I mm-hmm. mean, I had pretty much mostly A's and B's. Um, Were you an athlete in school? Uh huh. I played uh, played basketball. I played baseball. I ran track. Um, no football. I did though. high jump. No, I was a little too skinny for that. I didn't. Want, my parents wouldn't sign off on that one. You're just gonna get yourself killed. Um, that was one of the sports I thought I would have. I thought I would have been really good as a receiver. I really wanted to do that shit. And my parents were a little like, "Oh my God, you you're gonna get all." 
beat up and going to be broke up and <laughs> blah blah blah. And I'm like, <sighs> they didn't let you do it. They didn't let me do what it. What did your old man do? What did your my dad, dad do for my living? dad? Um, he actually was a supervisor at a, a warehouse. He's blue collar like James Evans. Um, he, my dad did every kind of job. My dad did security. My dad drove big big trucks, commercial trucks and stuff. I couldn't understand how my dad could drive something so big. He did that. He worked in the warehouse. He ended up, you know, um, getting out of the truck and ended up running to, like, you know, where all the packages, like, it would be, like, back in the day, like, like what Amazon is now. Yeah. If you were to imagine the back of Amazon and all that stuff that's going back there, he was that guy running that stuff and doing that kind of stuff. And like, did your mom was, work when you were a kid, too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my mom worked, my mom worked at a place called Novartis. Novartis? Um, Novartis. They're a huge pharmaceutical company. Oh, now. nice. And at that time, they were called Sandoz, S-A-N-D-O-Z. And she was what they called um, a research and development line operator. So, like, for instance, when you see all the medication going down the line, mm -hmm. there was, there was um, what they call protocol, and there was... Um, um, SOPs, so there's certain things that have to happen every time or that thing, that line gets shut down. That line could get contaminated. Right. That line could be like, okay, well, we find out we're going to stop from here back because these, you know, these capsules, they had gel caps, they had um, um, uh, suppositories, all that stuff. That medicine was going in it. It's almost like robots and shit. Yeah, it is. She was in control of all that stuff, and, you know, she did that for a long time. And I even got a chance to um, do like a summer job there, and working was, at the pharmaceutical company. Yeah, yeah. Company. And I was like, I'm not gonna do this shit. <laughs> I'm good. I'm gonna be a star. <laughs> I'm gonna be a star. I'm gonna be a star one day. I don't think I want to wear the hairnet and be here. We're looking at capsules all day. No, right. I'm what was the moment of your first big break? Like, what, like, was it? Do you remember the like the first thing big? you were like, shit, this is it. This is it. Like, I'm like I'm making it a career now. Like, I don't have to worry about, man, do I got to get a day job? You know, because we all have these, like, fluctuations in our mm -mm. career. But was there a moment that you were like, shit, My man. most definitive moment yes. like that was when I did Def Jam. Def Jam, yeah. Because I knew when I do this set that I got this eight-minute set, it's a wrap on the world. I knew without a shadow of a doubt nobody had a better set than that. That's how I felt about it. And I was like, yo... And now, and my, I was the first comedian on the first show at Def Comedy Jam. You had to come out first. I taped last, but that's my okay. set was so crazy they switched. They the wanted order. you up front. They wanted me to. Who do you remember? Who else was on the lineup? Ah, you had to look it up. Come on here, look it I up. Let's know. see who else was on this lineup. Who was, was on this that right lineup? here? Season one. Season one. Was that D. Ray Davis? Oh, that was season eight. No, you no, got to no, go no. season one. I was gonna say that's I way later. I was on later. the first episode. Bill Bellamy, Laura Hayes, G. George, Ted Carpenter. Mm -hmm. Martin Lawrence was the host, yes, right? Yes, yes. Go up to the first one. Let me see who else was on this. He goes, so, so on these first episodes, man, that's so wild. Joe Torrey, Derek Fox, Yvette Wilson, Anthony, but J. Anthony see, Brown. See, I, I think that's so. I came out in... 92? I, it was 92, I think. Yeah, 92. Def Jam comedy like changed the game. The game so much. And you know, and I think Russell had a lot to do with it in in the sense of like people were validated by Russell Simmons. Yeah, we so got much. validated like what was cool, what was cool about that show, it validated you as one of the funniest comics in the country. It, it was just a it stamp. Just, it's that just that was, a stamp. That was what, That's what all you Johnny needed. Carson was at yeah. one point. It was like if you did Def Comedy Jam. Oh, yo, you one of the funniest comedians in the country, it, period. It, yeah. Ain't nothing to talk about. If you not the world. You would not you would not be on there if you wasn't funny. Right. And so when I had the set of sets, like my set, I I just executed. I had my energy was right. I didn't right. stumble over words. I knew A, B, then I'm going to go to C, then I'm going to go to D, and I'm going to close on E. And you did so eight minutes, right? Eight minutes of fire. Fire. And my life changed. As soon as that shit aired, shoo! <laughs> I was, and it was, I was sitting on the, um, I was sitting on the tarmac like three, one thousand three, one thousand two, <laughs> one, and right here, right here, that's the set right there. Right, and look at what you're wearing, by the way. Look, at this. <laughs> like, like, 
I was like, I tried to explain to him. I'm like, you know, I tell my son, I'm like, yo, you know your daddy was fly. <laughs> yeah. I came in a game fly. Did you know, know you wanted to wear a suit? Did you decide? Oh, yeah, because I wanted to look like a star. Like, I just, that was on purpose. I was like, I got to look like a star. Like, I don't want to look like I'm homeless. Well, because a lot of guys wanted to be flashy. A lot of guys, like, yeah, yeah, there you are. In a, in so a, that's that's the young comedian special. Right, young So comedian, that led me, yeah. HBO, that's when HBO started, like, going, yo, this kid Bill Bellamy is next, next thing. And so I went from that to the, uh, that was the, uh, HBO's 15th Young Comedian Special. We taped that in Tempe, Arizona. How old were you then? I you was probably 22? 26, 26, 25, 26, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something funny about that. Um, guess who was on that show? On the Young Comedians one? You ready? Yeah. It was Andy Kindler. <laughs> yeah? Janine Garofalo. Wow. Nick DiPaolo. Wow. And Ray Romano. Wow. Can you believe that? My rookie ass was in there with Ray Romano, and Ray Romano went ham. He went crazy. Judd Apatow was on that one. Apatow. And Jana Carvey hosted it. What? That's even crazy. Bro, look at that lineup, bro. That's fucking wild. And the crazy is shit is Janine Garofalo ate it, and Andy Kindler ate it, and they went on before me on that show. And I said, oh, my God. And you crushed. <sighs> Was Bro, I was like, yo, not me. How did Ray Romano do? Killed. Uh, Ray was great. Good. Hey, hey. Uh, all right, guys. Good to meet you, Bill. Right, you know, he always had that kind of vibe. Like, He's you know, cool, man. Hey, man. He's so cool. Killed. Ap Appetite. Judd. What did Judd do? What did Judd? Judd, look where Judd started. <laughs> and like, people just think he's like the best, you know, uh, screenwriter guy. Yeah, they he's love him. He's a stand-up. Yeah, he was a stand-up. He's yeah. a stand-up. Like, that's me and Judd right there together. That was what, what year was that? Night. 92, probably 92. filmed in 91, right? Yeah, aired in 92. I'm on the ass, Andrew. Do you remember Do you remember buying that suit? Do you remember, like, getting that yeah, suit? Yeah, I remember suit? where I got that red one from. Where's that red one I got from? it in Jersey City. Because this guy, this African brother, be like, uh, Mr. Bellamy, you have to look good. You know, you have to look like a star. <laughs> and so he was like, come come to my store. I'll give you good, uh, good deal, good deal. Do you remember how much that suit was back then? It was probably like five, five hundred dollars, six hundred. It wasn't that's, too bad. Five hundred's a lot from ninety two. Yeah, for me. Ninety two, yeah. Ninety two, that's a lot. But then you know, I done spent way more than that. What's the most foolish thing that you think you've bought that you spent the most? Stupid money. On? money? Yeah, dumb shit. Dumb shit. Where you're like, come on, Bill. I'm gonna tell you the, the funniest shit I did. Yeah. So I was on MTV and um, I was going to interview Michael Jackson, right? And this was for a uh, history album. And I was interviewing him, and I was the guy who was introducing the the video to the world. So Michael Jackson is the first artist to premiere his video on every network simultaneously. Damn. That's big time. That's huge. That's, that's bro. That's like groundbreaking. See, I'm standing right there. Yeah. So that that suit that I went and bought right there was Armani. Mm. It was three thousand dollars in what year was this this was 90 what was it 94 93 it doesn't say does it tell you what, what album was it history no, wow armani 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 five grand 95 it's 95 so i went to barney's barney's men's store on Park Avenue. I, I was going to say, it's got to be on it Park Avenue. Uh, yo, when I tell you, uh, that men's store used to be the bomb, and I said, yo, I got to look like a star for this shit. I got to look, because Mike, I know Mike was going to wear some captain shit, something <laughs> fly. You see, Mike always came yeah. like he was like a goddamn uh, captain of a uh, cruise ship or some shit. And so, <laughs> <laughs> toot toot. Yo, toot toot. <laughs> so I was like, yo, I'm going to wear some flowy shit that's going to be dope. And, uh, I, let me tell you what's funny about that suit. That was a $3,000 suit, right? I had to leave the tags in it because MTV wouldn't pay for it. I had to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a ah! that, that's a wild era, too. That's yeah. also... Well, when we talked about this, you were in a Tupac video. Mm -hmm. Temptations. But he wasn't in the video. No, because he was in jail. He was in jail. Yeah. And he wrote me a letter. If I could go back to my... Go to my mom's house... And go through. I might have it still in one of. My, it's probably be one of those classics. You wrote your letter from jail. Literally, it had Rikers Island. Da 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 da. You get a you know a serial number. This right. that and the other. He's like, Yo, B man, I appreciate you. 
I love you, man. I'm gonna be out of here. I'm, they got me locked down right now. Um, I'm, I'm just asking all my people, my favorite people, man, to, 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 to hook me up, man, with this with this new video I'm dropping. It was called Temptations, and um, Dave Nelson um, um, uh, was the director, and Coolio was the guy that was going to go shock G. Right. There's a uh, the one uh, that put the satin on your pants. Yeah. Right? And there's Ice T was in it. Yeah. Kenya Moore was in it. Uh, Jada was in it. Um, Warren G. Warren G was yeah, in it. Yeah, everybody. Yo, it was, and I was in the, and I was in the scene with Jasmine Guy in the bed. Is that, that might be, a, I don't know if that's was Tay that Diggs. Jada? That's me. There you are, though. <laughs> Waving people over. Yo, look at this. Yeah, I'm about to get that Jasmine Guy <laughs> booty. <laughs> Yo. Hip hop videos were basically light pornos. It was like baby porn. Was baby light porn, man. Look at this. I'm licking the... <laughs> <laughs> I was a player, player. player. Ah, shit. So, so he wrote you the letter just thanking you, saying yeah, thanks for doing I, the and whole I, thing. And, and, and what was so dope is when he did get out, I got the interview. So what, when you go and watch Tupac and Bill interview, that was where he was like, yo, I'm, I'm fucking with you. Like, he came and... Gave me my interview first before he did MTV News. That's wild. That was dope. Yeah, but we was friends before that though. Like you see right there. There we go. Yeah. Fresh out of jail, California dreaming. It was who? What? What rapper were you the closest with? You think? Uh let's see. Mm, like who was someone that you Pac considered such so, a good friend? Like, like a good Pac, friend. Pac, Tretch, Warren G. Me and Warren used to man. This is, man, Warren was one of the most competitive um, uh, uh, Madden players ever. Loved Madden. When, when Madden first came out, Warren G was the first person I ever played for money, and he smoked my ass. <laughs> and it was uh, this is like when we would be doing them shows where I'm hosting. They always brought them, uh, brought the uh, the Sagas. Yeah, they bring it with they them. They bring it with them. Hey, man, something wrong with this controller, homie. No, it's you. It ain't the controller, homie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that West Coast talk. Right are you still are you still close with people like like artists from that era? Are you still yeah. close with guys today? Mm -hmm. I, I just never really had a um, you know, I never had a bad time with anybody, man. It's like uh, recently I just you know I saw Dr. Dre and we just started, you know, we was just like, man, damn, Dre, like it's crazy, dog, what we've been through together. Like and he's like, man, it's crazy. Anytime you want to come to the crib, man, come see the new studio, blah blah blah. Like I, I want to do that kind of stuff and follow up on it because I'm so busy. I'm doing this and I'll be forgetting. But like guys like Snoop, Dre, Warren, guys that like we kind of like came up together you know whenever i see jay-z it's like you know we always just like got that smile because it's like yo we came up together you grew like, up you literally we grew, grew up literally together. grew up in the business together when i see queen latifah you know it's like oh my god like bill that's crazy like i ran into um like usher right you know usher uh was probably 15 when he first came in the game. Mm -hmm. And I remember his first album, you know, when he was coming up and next thing you know, he had confessions and I went to see him in uh, in Vegas. His show is bananas, by the way. If you want to go. Oh, it's doing right. He's doing oh, right, oh, right now, right? Oh, oh, it's great. Like he probably got the best show I ever seen in Vegas, like outside of Michael Jackson shit. Like his show is immersive. It's like you have a good time. His DJ is crazy. He's amazing. He's got dancers and skaters. You just be like, you be like, Usher just went right by me. Whoa. You know what I mean? It's, it's really well done. So when I see guys like him and I'm like, wow. Like I, I used to see Mariah all the time. I haven't seen Mariah in a long time. But me and Mariah Carey came up together. You know, it's just like, oh my God, Mariah, you're so nice to me. Yeah. She's like, Bill, you're such a good guy. Oh my God. <laughs> I saw Tony Braxton when I was in... Um, New York promote my book and we just we just hug because it's like it's certain people in your life that you just really lock in with. Look, look at me and Mariah. We It's so funny to like grow we up. We were in Hawaii together right You there. grew up in this era, but then also grew up with these people. I mean, it was it's almost a thing you can only look back on and really understand it and feel it. Cause when you're there, this is just your life. Yeah. But then you look back and you're like, man, that was a revolutionary. Dude, I time. remember the first time I saw Eminem. And I was like, Dr. Dre's crazy. 
You thought he was trash? You thought he was trash? I didn't think he was trash, but I was just like, yo, this is kind of gimmicky. Like Like the My Name Is? Like, like, my name is, my name is, (laughs) my name is. And I was kind of like, God, this little shady. I was like, okay, Dr. Dre, you may be. Man, you might you have missed. You might have missed on this one. Yeah. Shit. Prove me wrong. Did not miss. That goddamn Eminem is the truth, boy. <laughs> Shout out to my man Eminem. My bad. <laughs> 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 I just didn't know. I mean, coming from the Chronic and Snoop and you know the yeah. Dog Pound gangsters and all this, and you got Slim Shady. <laughs> <laughs> and he sold more records than all of them. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. He swung hard, though, but that is interesting to think. It was like... It was so different. Well, at the time, too, like, white rap prior to that. Was just Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice, really. And Beastie Boys. And Beastie Boys, yeah. But, I mean, they were so... Beastie Boys were so... I always felt like Beastie Boys was like a cool hip-hop white boy band. It was hip-hop. No, that's kind of what it was. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was almost like a band that does a little bit of hip-hop. Like, I never felt like they were run DMC. Well, I mean, they, see, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like hardcore Beastie fans are like, yeah, and third base. Yeah, third base. Yeah, like third base was like fly. Like, yeah. like I see Search every now and then, though, and, uh, you know, we we text and stuff, and he'd be like, yo, Bill, man, you come through Florida, man. Team up with me. Uh, he he's a really good guy. But these were these were all like kind of the precedents of white guys in hip hop, mm-hmm. and and BC were kind of the most iconic of white dudes that were also bros, but that were embedded in the culture and were respected by the culture. Yeah. So I think Eminem was the first time people saw uh, a white dude who was for real just a white, but but not trying to be anything other than like he was talking about being from, you know. Detroit. The, tr- the, tr- the, you know, the trenches of from Detroit. From the trenches seven of, mile of Detroit. So it's kind of like people were used to like, BC Boys were like fun party guys, hey guys from New York. Yeah, we're you know? doing it, man. But then they heard this white dude really from a fucking terrible place. So I think it threw people off and a lot of people at first. Because I didn't know if it was authentic at first. Well, that's right. What, a lot of people that's what I was saying. Like, who could in, know? Because I was like, Slim Shady, that ain't no real rap name. Like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> I didn't know. And then, like, he just kept dropping hit after hit after hit after hit. Unbelievable. Like, when we had House of Pain, yeah. you know, we had Cypress Hill, yeah. you know, they were they were dope, you know what I mean? They were real rap artists. Like, there's nothing to talk about. Like, you know, House of Pain was tough, bro. Yeah. Cypress Hill, they, they was they was real. They was like, you know, Fred Durst. Yeah, he, yeah you Fred, forget. Yeah, Fred was in there. Fred was in but there. But this guy was the first time. Necro, yeah, Necro. That, he had some foul, foul shit. Necro, but, but I mean, someone like Eminem was the first time, I think, suburban kids yeah. saw a dude that came from a place that maybe some of them came from, like a tougher area. It didn't have to be in the city. You could have grown up without any money and been a poor white kid and saw him and was like, this is kind of how I feel about yeah. this shit. You know what and I mean? he was speaking to that to that youth, man, and it was a testament to his to his talent. And, and Dr. Dre. And Dr. Fucking... Dre seeing it. Like, Dr. Dre was like, yo, this dude's dope. I remember how he stand, he stood on it hard, too. He was like, I saw him. And I was just like, yo, this kid dope. We getting in the studio and we ain't stopping. I was like, oh shit, all right. We'll Were see other people happened. around him like, mm, don't work with them? No, no, I don't remember that. But you, I just, but Bill Bellamy I, was I, like, don't I, do I, it. I was, I was lucky enough. I was lucky enough to be around Dre from 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 Snoop. So you got to understand. So Dre was producing for Snoop. Then, then it was um, it was Daz and Corrupt yeah. and all these guys that were under that that umbrella of of Death Row. So at that time, I'm around these cats, so I'm getting sneak peeks of this, that, and the other. And I, when Dre when Dre left and went to Aftermath, I'm still communicating and whatever. And he was like, "Yo, I got this new artist, <laughs> M and them. He, he gonna be bigger than everything." I never forget. I was like, "What?" He was like, "Watch." We in the studio right now. <laughs> we bringing it to MTV, and that's it was he was gone because he was controversial too. He yeah. was saying all that shit that yeah. you know, like a, he was like the angry white boy. He was like, and he was saying it in a clever way, but he was getting he was getting in trouble. Remember? Oh yeah, people was like the Elton, oh, jo- my the Elton God. John thing. And yeah, all that. Oh, they yeah. was trying to give him a hard time, but it blew him up. It only made him bigger. It only made him bigger. Well, because everybody knew that as like it, <clears throat> like anything, like we're dancing in the same world as comedians is like. Anytime somebody gets mad at something that you say and you're like, you know, if you can tell if the artist's heart is in the right place, they're doing it for entertainment factor. Yeah. Not because they're 
you know. Yeah, we're not trying to be disrespectful. That's or whatever. entertainment, man. Man, we're like as comedians, and this is one of the things I just want to say about this cancel culture thing, especially when it comes to comics. Like, you got to understand, like, our job is to be um, the eyes of the culture, eyes of humanity, eyes of relationships, uh, uh, ups and downs in life, and take a simple aspect of life and flip it. You can't be so soft-skinned that, you know, oh, my God, he said something about divorcees. <laughs> oh, that's a real situation that people go through. Right. And maybe you got to take on it. That's hilarious. Like, I love Bill Burr. Like, Bill Burr has such a great take on racism, yeah. such a great take on being, you know, an Irish guy and, you know, marrying a black woman and this, that, and the other. And the, He puts it out there so beautifully for well, you. Someone's got to say it. Yeah, and he doesn't care. And he's whiny about it. I love it. Oh, I don't... Listen, ah, you know, I love Bill Burr. Like, that's my guy, man. He's so fucking money to me. He is. But, like, I never go, oh, oh, my God, he hurt my feelings. I'm like, yo, Bill, that's crazy. That's funny. Yeah, because, it's, <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's like someone someone has to take, <clears throat> if you're going to want comics to be these, you know, these len lenses into what's going on in the mm -hmm. world, it's going to come at some risk that you're not going to enjoy what they say. You ain't going to like everything Bill Bellamy say. I get it. I mean, that's life, you know what I'm saying? But if there's a couple things in there that I could do that might make you go, wow, I never thought of it like that. That's kind of true, though. And that's, you know? that's worth all that's of worth, it. That's it. That's, that's, that's all, all we try it. to do be like, yo, me too. When people leave your show, they're like, yo, yo, man, he said <laughs> this. I said the same thing in the car yesterday. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That's what you want. That's what you to want. resonate. Uh, I love you, buddy. I appreciate you coming. Yes. Please watch, uh, watch, listen to, enjoy, indulge his podcast, Top Billing. Top Billing. Go get the book, Top, Top Billing, Billing, available everywhere. Yes. Uh, it's the internet. You know you can find it. You it's know how easy. To get it. Amazon, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. We, they dropped the book off by a drone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we end the show the same way. You look into that camera right there. Okay. You say one word or one phrase to end the episode. Whenever you're ready, say one word or one phrase doesn't matter what it is, but it's going to end the episode. Look in that camera when you're ready. Extraordinary. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Thank you.